Hi guys, welcome to this 47th tutorial in this series of programming PIC microcontroller with MPLAB XC8 compiler. This is part 2 of interfacing an SD card with a PIC microcontroller tutorial. In part 1, we explain the connections of an SD card to a PIC microcontroller. In this simple example, we're gonna use the PIC 18F45K22. The chip select pin of the SD card is connected to RC0 of the PIC microcontroller. The data in of the SD card is connected to SPI data out of the PIC microcontroller. The data out of the SD card connected to SPI data in of the PIC microcontroller. And the clock pin of the SD card is connected to SPI clock of the PIC microcontroller. In this second part, we're gonna introduce you guys to the chance FATFS SD card library. Reading and writing to SD card is very complex and requires some complex functions and procedures to handle the card input output operations correctly. For those who don't want to fully understand the internal operation of SD card, there are many SD card libraries that one can use. Microchip libraries for applications, which is a collection or various peripheral libraries like the USB, graphics, file input, memory disk drive which is a SD card library and some other various libraries. The problem the file input output library is no longer supported for 8-bit PIC microcontrollers like PIC 16F and PIC 18F series. It only supported in 16-bit PIC microcontrollers like PIC 24 and DS PIC 33. In this tutorial, we're going to have the FETFS Generic FET File System Module Library. This is a free FET implementation in the form of a library and application interface module destined to small embedded systems. The FETFS module is written in compliance with the NCC and completely separated from the disk input output layer. Therefore, it is independent of the platform. It can be incorporated into small microcontrollers with limited resource such as 851, PIC microcontroller, AVR, ARM, Z80, 78K, and so on. There is also Petit FET FS module for tiny microcontrollers. You can access this library by clicking on this link. It said the Petit FETFS is a subset of FETFS module for tiny 8-bit microcontrollers. It's written also in compliance with NCC and completely separated from the disk input-output layer. It can be incorporated into the tiny microcontrollers with limited memory even if the RAM size is less than the sector size. These are some features of these tiny 8-bit microcontrollers. Very small RAM consumption, just 44 byte work area plus certain tasks. Very small size code, 2 kilobyte to 4 kilobyte. It can be used for FET12, FET16, and FET32. Single volume and single file. Streaming file read, file write function with some restrictions. These are the functions that you can use when you are using this Petit FET FS library. There is a PF mount, PF open, PF read, PF write, PF lseq, PF open directory, and PF read directory. So we're not going to discuss much about this library because we're going to use the full featured FETFS library. These are some of the features of this FETFS library. Windows compatible FET file system platform independent, easy to port, so you can use it whether you are using PIC microcontrollers, AVR or other microcontrollers. Very small footprint for code and work area. It got some various configuration options. We're going to go quickly through those configurations. You can use multiple volumes with this library, multiple NC OEM code pages including DBCS, long file name support, RTOS support for multitask operation, multiple sector size support up to 4 kilobyte, read only, minimize API input output buffer and so on.
These are the functions that you can use to access your SD card using this library. We're gonna go through some of these functions. The F open, it's a function to open or create a file. We've got the F close, which is a function to close and open file. F read to read data, F write to write data, and so on. So let us go quickly through some few functions. The first function that we're gonna go through is F mount. It says this function register or unregister a work area. This function takes three parameters. The first parameter is the file system object. This is a pointer to the file system object to be registered and cleared. For example, we can create a file system name FETFS. The next parameter is the logical drive number. This is the pointer to the new terminated string that specifies the logical drive. So if you're going to use more than one drive, then you have to use this parameter. But if you're going to use the default drive, then you can use the string without drive number. And the last parameter is the initialization option. Zero means do not mount now to be mounted later. And one means force mounted the volume to check if the fed volume is ready to work. Whenever you use this function f mount, these are the return values. When a function succeeds, it returns zero. Otherwise, it returns non-zero value that indicate type of error. FR OK, which is going to be zero, indicate that the call was successful. We've got some other return values like FR invalid drive, FR disk error, FR not ready, FR no file system. This is an example how you can use this function. The first thing is to declare a FETFS work area. This is needed for each volume that you're going to use. If you're going to use only one volume, then you're going to declare this only once. So we're going to say FETFS, FETFS. This FETFS is our file system object. Then we're going to say if F mount and FETFS. And then we're going to select the default drive. And we're going to initialize with one to force the mounted driver to check if the FET volume is ready to work. And if it returns the value of FR OK, which is going to be zero to tell us that the function call was successful, then I'm going to do something here. The next function that we're going to discuss is F open. This function open or create a file. This function takes some few parameters. The first parameter is file object structure. This is a pointer to the blank file object structure. For example, we can say fill and the object structure we're going to use fill. So if we're going to need to access more than one file, then we'll have to declare different file object structure for all those files. The next parameter is file name. This is the pointer to the nil terminated string that specifies the file name to open or to create. And the last parameter is the mod flex. This specifies the type of access and open method for the file. It is specified by combination of the following flex. The FA open always. This flag open the file if it existing. If not, a new file will be created. FA read, data can be read from the file. FA write, data can be written to the file. FA create new. This flag creates a new file. The function fails if the file already exists. FA create always. This flag creates a new file. If the file is existing, it will be truncated and overwritten. And FA open existing. This open the file. The function fails if the file is not existing. So this is a simple example to open a create a file named test.txt with read and write access. The first thing, we're going to declare a file object. This file object is needed for each open file that you're going to use. So we're going to say if f open, then we're going to specify this file. And the name of this file, we're going to name it test.txt. And this is how you can combine your type of access flags. We're going to say fa open always to open a file. And if this file does not exist, it will be created. FA read to give a read access and FA write to give write access to our file x -ray. And if the call return is FR OK, then we're going to do something here. The other function that we're going to discuss is FWrite. This function writes a data to a file. 
This function takes a few parameters. The first parameter is fp, which is a pointer to the open file object structure. The next parameter is buff. This is a pointer to the data to be written. The next parameter is btw. This specifies the number of bytes to write in a range of unsigned int type. The bw. This is a pointer to the unsigned int variable to return the number of bytes written. So the value is always valid after the function call regardless of the result. So this is a simple example how you can use this fwrite function. We're just going to open the file test.txt and we're going to write hello world inside that file. We're going to say fwrite and fill. This is our file that we've opened. And inside that file we're going to write hello world. And then we'll have to specify the number of characters. And in this case, we're going to use 14 characters. The last function that we're going to discuss is fclose. This function closes an open file. All you have to specify is the pointer to the file that was open. You can go through all these functions to learn more. If you click on each function, it's going to give you details on how you can use that function. Let's say if I open the, the fget, which is a read a string function. It says f get read the string from the file and here it describes the parameter that you're gonna use. If you go to this FETFS generic FET file system module website, all the information that you need on how to use these functions, you can access all this information from this website. At the bottom of this page, there are also a couple of resources that you can download to get started. You can download these library files by clicking on this link. The last update was in September 5, 2015. There are also a couple of sample projects for various platforms. And this is going to be the end of this part. We introduce you guys to the popular FETFS library that can be used with MPLAB XCH compiler. In part 3, we're going to create a simple project using pic 18 f 45 k 22 to create a file inside an SD card. And we're going to learn how we can write some few data in that file. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.